It is no big reveal that time tracking and journaling can be invaluable tools to help you find the time to focus on your creative work, but how do you pick the one that's right for you? And how do you even use a time tracker? We're gonna look at some options right now. Welcome to the Lean Into Artcast mini workshop episode where we explore an art or creative task and demonstrate how we think about it and work on it. My name is Jersey Drozd. I'm a cartoonist and teaching artist. And I'm Rob Stenzinger. I am a user experience designer, interactive maker, and teaching artist. Good to see you, Rob. What are we talking about today? Well, we're going to talk about, there's a structure to the mini work, workshop episodes. We're going to talk about mm -hmm. why this is important to us. What else are we going to cover? Well, we'll do a live demonstration. It's meant to be practical and also, yeah, think about the meaning of it, right? But but you can take away something from this. It is a mini workshop. And then in that in that light, in that regard, we're going to give you an example to try. And we're going to celebrate what we love about this, what we learned through this. And of course, after all that, we can wonder like about different paths, other options, possibilities. Maybe there's even um, some risks about it. So we said, talk about why this matters. Um, you know, something that's important to me whenever I'm learning something is like, why is it important that I learn this and who is this really for? So, you know, I think about creative people who are challenged in finding the time to make their creative work happen. Like we talk about whittling on the Leaning to Artcast a lot. Well, okay, but how do you structure that whittling? Um, how much time do I even need to block? Can I do a big project 20 minutes at a time, right? So it's like l mm -hmm. learning how much time to schedule and learning how to structure that, I think, is if you have difficulty doing that, this is a workshop for you. Um, anything else that we are concerned about at the top of this? Uh, no, I think I think you, you you're setting us up to succeed. I'm looking forward to like it's uh, demonstrating that it's important to do the supporting uh, things that set you up to have the kind of outcomes that you want to have with, with your creative projects and work. It's, it takes some administrative thing. Those mechanisms matter and they're, they're learnable skills. Yeah. And, and speaking of learnable, we're going to actually do a demonstration. We're actually going to talk about how to conduct a self meeting to learn what you want to do this week and then how to make your own time tracker so that you can gather data on how your weeks go. And we're going to do that in about two minutes. First, we got to thank some people who make this, this project possible. And those are the people who support us on Patreon. Patreon.com slash Lena Tart is the website. What is it? It's a way for you to give us a monthly upvote. If you find this project helpful, it's helping you do creative work. You can support us by going to patreon.com slash Lena Tart. And I want to thank five people who've been supporting us on an ongoing basis. Susan Marks. Thank you, sir. Susan, for believing in what we do. Art Muffin, who you can find on Instagram at Art Muffin underscore studio. Thank you, Art Muffin. Mike White, who you can find at Mike White Robot on Instagram. Thank you, Mike. And Cameron Callahan, who said some lovely things about the podcast recently on Twitter. You can follow him and find out what he said by going to Twitter and looking for Cam Callahan. And Sophie Lawson. Thank you, Sophie, for believing in us and what we do. You can find Sophie at Sophie Lawson Art on Twitter. You can join them all at uh, leanintoart.com slash Patreon or patreon.com slash leanintoart where you'll get access to all the shows we make, as well as the extra leans, the show we record only for people who support us on Patreon. And it gets you access to the Patreon-only section of the Lena Tuart Discord, which you can join at lenatuart.com slash Discord. Also, be sure to check out the new Lena Tuart Monthly Lab membership, which is, once again, at patreon.com slash Art. Thanks to everybody who supports us there. It means a lot to us. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you so much. That um, that lab session is a new thing, and it's it's worth mentioning that it's, um, you know, it's essentially a third uh, th third Wednesday third Wednesday of every month meeting, right, for ninety minutes, and um, it's it's meant to be sort of a supportive, collaborative check in, and or just a place for you to feed off of the energy of the folks who are sharing things where they're stuck in their work or demonstrating things that they're proud of making and potentially getting encouragement, reactions in that. Right. So think of it as like creative accountability for 10 bucks a month as it's low starting price. Yeah. Introductory price of $10 a month. And, and we'll be there to facilitate and working right alongside you. So mm -hmm. that said. You 
It's in the song. You teach me and I'll teach you. So I promised I was going to teach us how to make a time tracker and basically like what I call my ETP or Emergent Task Planner, although that is something that was designed by our friend D. Uh, D Street Say, which we'll talk about later. But let me go to um, my overhead cam and I'll show you the one that I use. This is the, the time tracker I use uh, for the last, I want to say, six years, though I have eight years of time tracking in my history, like in my studio that is like easily you can reach over and grab it because um, this data is very useful as we'll explore. But I start with a graph composition um, notebook that you can get at the, you know, like a, a Target or a Meyer. Um, right as the school year begins, they go on sale for like 50 cents a piece. And I've got, I think I've got like five years worth of them <laughs> in my studio, <laughs> like blank ones. Um, so, so what do you need to start? You need a graph composition notebook. If you want to follow along with this one, um, you can start with, you know, I like to use colored pens of different types, but I recently consolidated to using multi pens, which are, you know, a refillable five color pen. Um, and we'll go into why I use different colors momentarily. And then you'll need a ruler or some kind of straight edge. The one I use is actually, it's an old He-Man uh, playing card that I, I've laminated so that it works <laughs> as my straight edge. And so I, I get to have a visit with He-Man every week where we, we set up our emergent task planner. And then you'll need to have your calendar or schedule ready because you want to look at what appointments you have going on, what and I'm, for me, I talk about like anything that's on the schedule. If it's a dentist appointment, if it's, you know, going to a game, if it's, you know, um, date night, all that stuff gets captured. Um, I don't know about you, Rob, but like for me, I use my planner for like all aspects of my life, not just my professional life. <clears throat> uh, yeah, that's, so you're, you're doing the, 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 as far as granularity, you're doing a, going to set us up with a weekly plan, yes. right? Yes. And daily? Okay. And daily. So it's when I have done that, yeah, I, it's, it is uh, really, it's important to have everything in, in one spot for me. Right. So you're not, uh, haunted and, and like set up to, for to all of a sudden there's a trap you thought you had availability <laughs> and no, you don't. Yep. That's exactly right. I have, I have double booked myself in the past and it was a very painful experience. So I, I try not to do that anymore. So I open up in page one is what I call my staging page, or it's like my, my look at the whole week page. Mm. Um, so are you going to get yeah, one to show us? No, oh, no, I'm not going to show you okay. mine. <laughs> I'm sorry. My yeah, I, I just uh, follow personal I, stuff. So <laughs> yeah, no. I wonder why you were, were you doing that. I, I was reaching over to shut something off. Um, so the staging page is where I put um, the week ahead. So like, let's say, um, you know, week one ending January seven, just pretending, right? So I write that in the top right. Um, and I'll go through all of the weeks of the year, one week at a time to this book. And then, so the staging area is where I put the categories of like the different work that I'm going to do. So I'll put, let's say I have, and I use different colors for these things. So I've got teaching and then over to the right of that. And I actually have two columns that I follow. And I put to the right of that podcasting. So that's another thing I do. So it's worth having a check-in with yourself about like what tasks do you want to complete? Like what, what creative projects do you have? And then what other jobs do you have? Um, so like another one that I put on here is I have two categories for comics. I have comics one, which I put in green. And then comics two that I put in purple. I'm not saying that you necessarily need to do these exact categories. I think ask yourself like what tasks projects do you want to take on in the given week? Now, the difference between these two is the green one is the one I get money for. Any work that I've been hired to draw goes in the green tank. Any work that I'm doing that's personal and is something I'm doing that I'm not necessarily making direct money off of goes in the purple tank. Then we get to my two bottom categories. This one is um, advocacy. Ad CXC. This is my job as the executive director of CXC. This is like a, a job that I get paid for. So that goes here. And then to the right of that in pink goes my personal stuff, personal life, as in these are things that it's not necessarily me creating anything, but these are like appointments with friends, like phone calls with people that I care about. If I got like a haircut or doctor's appointment, that kind of stuff goes there. 
So I leave these blank for now. I just like put those those holding tanks in there. And actually, this is a new one that I recently added was marketing. I was wondering because for, for me, I've been thinking a lot about this combination combination of make, market, and merchandise, right? Mm-hmm. And that I, I was and so all my pro so many of my projects need that. And or you know, do I do that as its own bucket or do I do that in each project? Yeah. So I, I have I have like a marketing bucket now that I, I put for all of my projects. Um nice. so Let's see. So we've got like the, the week starting. And by the way, I start my weeks on Sundays. That's up to you, obviously. If you want to start your week on Monday or Sunday, you know, I know I know the world is uh, very uh, split on this kind of idea. So this is the professional. The left column is stuff I get paid for, right? The teaching work that people hire me for, the comics that I've been contracted to do, or my work as the festival uh, coordinator, director, right? Over here, these, mm-hmm. are, th- these are projects that I don't get direct or at least... Not enough direct funding that I can call it a part-time job, right? Uh, my, my personal comics work and the podcast that I do, you know, support us on Patreon so I can move this podcasting column over here. <laughs> and then marketing <laughs> goes in the bottom. Um, so now I go through with my black pen, and on each page I'm going to put, you know, Sunday... At the top, top right of each page, I'm going to write the day and the date. Sunday, Jan 1... Monday, let's get this in the shot, Jan 2, and so on, you know, go all the way through Saturday, right, Tuesday, Jan 3, and so I do one week's worth of dating the top right of each page. When I'm mm-hmm. done dating the pages, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start breaking this grid into sort of um, functional blocks, like blocks where like I'm going to be putting certain amounts of certain kinds of data. And I start with the bottom. I go about like, I don't know, a quarter of the way up the page, take up my He-Man straight edge. And I just draw a line horizontally across the bottom of the page. And I put here, what good happened? And then we can talk about these blocks in a second after I draw them. Then I go to the left side of the page, and about like a third of the way into the page, I draw a vertical line that intersects, or stops at the what good happen line. Now I've got these two areas here. This side, the left side, is where I'm going to put the hours of the day. And I'm going to start with the hour that I typically start a work day, any work day, whether I'm working as a teacher, or working as a cartoonist, or working as a festival director. So I start at 9 a.m., and I skip a line, I go to 10, skip a line, go to 11, and 12, 1, 2, 3. I'm not doing military time. You can do military time if you prefer. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. I go all the way to midnight just in case. I don't. I very rarely have any work that falls in this area, but sometimes I do, like down after 8 o'clock. So, mm. so this measurement of time going down is this line is where 9 o'clock starts. Right where the line intersects. See, I'm drawing right on the grid line there. So that means that is the moment nine o'clock starts. Oh, interesting. That's thirty minutes. I was wondering if that was on purpose. I was watching you. So on the line. Okay. Yeah. So that this block, these two squares, represent thirty minutes each, because we're going to do a little uh-huh. bit of like time estimation shortly. Nice. So then over over here on the right side, this is the tank for tasks. This is where tasks go. So I'm going to start couple lines down, I'm going to write the number one, but this time I write in the box. One, I skip a line, two, three, four, five, six. Now, I try my best to stick to six tasks in a day. Sometimes I have as many as ten, but ideally you only have like three big things that you want to do, but I, I, I've learned over time that I can't fit uh, less than six in a day, or I can't focus on less than six, just given the, the constraints that I'm operating under right now. So these are where you're going to name your tasks. These are the hours of the day. These are where you name your tasks. Okay. Um, so this is where the color coding comes in, where I'm going to say like, okay, well, if I have an appointment, I'm going to teach a class on Monday at 2 p.m., right? Then that's where I will put in this task list, uh, teaching class 
and I would name the school, wherever the school is, Beale City. Right? So that's, my, that's one of the first tasks I've got on my list. This, this order isn't necessarily the order I'm going to do them in. It's just it's a numbering system so I can keep track of things. So the first task that I do that day might fall in number six as I think of it, and then I'll just put a star saying do this one first. But anyway, so it once sounds I'll, like it's your it, that represents your capacity. So you're saying I can take on six things today, or or you you found a pattern where you're almost like I must take on six things today, and yeah. you're just listing them. That's exactly right. right yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. This is just me. This is just like a, a place to like do a brain dump of what needs to happen on that day, mm -hmm. and then I'll figure out the order later, which I'll show you in a second. So now, once I've got the dates and the task uh, buckets and the what good happened. By the way, what good happened? This this information is to capture what I did. This block is how I feel about it. This is to capture some qualitative data about the day. Um, and I try to phrase it in like looking for possibility. What good happened? Not necessarily what good I did. That could be part of it. But anything else good happen this day to think about and reflect on? Be, like have a little moment of gratitude about whatever occurred on this day. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it's full of bad news. <laughs> I'll say nothing. A bunch of bad stuff happened today. I thought I was going to do these things and I didn't. But in any case, the prompt is meant to be a positive one. So once I've got the pages numbered, I've got the dates. I've got my tank for capturing time and a tank for capturing uh, tasks, and a tank for capturing feelings, I go back to my staging page. Now, at the top of every week, I have a self-meeting, which I usually spend, I want to say, about 30 minutes on. And I look at my calendar, and I'll look at you know my ongoing task list. And I am fortunate that I have my last week's ETP to look at, or my uh, time tracker, to look at what didn't get done and what I hope to accomplish. And I can do a little reflection on that. But here I'll put... We've talked about in the Lean Tar cast a couple times. There's two different kinds of tasks that we do. Like there's the earth bending mm -hmm. task and the air bending task, right? Mm -hmm. um, Which um, that came up not too long ago. And it's so an earth bending task requires your dedicated attention and it's less interruptible, has more of a cost if it is interrupted. Whereas a um, an air bending task is just more prone to be. Um, very, it's, it's okay if it's interrupted and if it's, uh, interspersed between other things and, or can fall in a to be determined, um, position in the day. That kind right. Of thing. Right. So when I'm, when I'm now I'm going to start putting in all the stuff that needs to happen this week, according to its categorical bucket. So if I say, okay, RoboForce, I'm working on a RoboForce comic right now. And let's say, um, I have some pencils and inks that I want to get done. So I'll put pencils. And I'll put inks down a couple more lines because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, delineate which pages need to be penciled. So let's say page three needs to be penciled. Uh, page two needs to be inked. I'll put P P3, P2. There's no mm -hmm. date associated. The, just some point this week, these two things have to occur. Okay, that's an airbending task. I can put them anywhere in the week, wherever there's a spot. And then mm -hmm. I'll put an estimate of how many 15-minute chunks I think it's going to take to do. This one is tricky if you've never done this before because, well, you're going to have to make a guess. And then when you track your time, you're going to see how good you are at guessing it. And you're going to learn how long it actually takes you to do these things. So I'll say, okay, I think the page three pencils are going to take me two hours, which equals eight 15 minute chunks. And I'll draw two little groups of four hashes. Right? Oh, there we are. Hmm. So I'm going to say two hours. Interesting. And I'll say the inks, I think that's going to take me an hour and a half. And I usually do that. So I, there's my estimation of time. And now with earth bending tasks, like a class, when I'm teaching a class, I'll say like what, Wednesday I have mentoring with a student. And I have a class on Tuesday. So I'll say Ann Arbor Art Center class. And then Friday I'm doing a school visit at a certain school, right? So those, mm -hmm. those happen at a very specific date and time. So in that case, what I'll do for, for tasks that tend to have appointments, I'll do a Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday list on my, under that category. Okay. Uh -huh. So this is, again, I'm staging up my week and looking at how the week's going to shake out so then I can start assigning these tasks to specific days. So again, since I was working on Monday, I'll say I also have like a, um, 
webinar. I'll just put that there for now so I can use Monday as an example. Now, podcasting. And so this is yeah. still all part of your self meeting, right? Yes, correct. Doing the setup. This is Yes, this is part of the self meeting is like collecting everything that I want to accomplish in that week. So podcasting, well, I know Thursday I've got Lean Into Art. Uh, and I'll often put like what episodes, you know, it's like lean to art, um, mini workshop slash creative work chat. And then Fridays is when I record the 4 million years later podcast episode 60 or whatever. So I'll put the dates for those. Cause those are, again, are appointments where I have to be there at that time and I can't be doing anything else at, the, at that time. Hmm. So personal comics, I'll just put like, okay, Amazon Academy. Um, mm. Penciling test. And I'm going to budget myself two hours to work on that. So, oh, and by the way, I should budget these too. So lean into art. I'll say one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, approximately three hours of time between planning and recording all of it. And same thing with 4 million years later, approximately three hours. And then with the classes, I'll also budget those. That class is going to take me approximately an hour. This class will be an hour and a half. This class or this mentoring session will be one hour and the school visit will be an hour and a half. And I'm going to add this all up shortly. And then down in advocacy CXC, I, I have a lot of meetings that I attend. So this is going to be one of those areas where I actually write the days of the week, Monday, Tuesday, mm. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And then I'll put when, you know, meetings. And then I have other ongoing tasks that will go in there as like website testing, call X about Y, like individual tasks that happen to occur on any kind of ongoing basis with my job at CXC. And I usually have a budget of 20 hours a week for that. So that one I'm just going to, call out right now. I don't, I'm not going to estimate any of this. I know I've budgeted 20 hours a week, no matter what for that. Um, then we get to the personal section and, you know, stop me at any time if you, if you want clarification or if you want to reflect on any of these things, Rob. Um, uh, I, uh, nothing, nothing too specific yet. I, I think, uh, it seems like you have, uh, yeah, you've, so when, is it to be assumed? So as soon as you put Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, you, you put the days of the week, you have an earthbender um, portion of that. Yes. Okay. Yes. And then, but you have a hybrid of earthbender and airbender tasks exactly. in advocacy. Okay. Yep. Is that my yep. reading that right? Okay. That is exactly right. Yes. So this okay. is, er, I, this one I do earthbending and airbending tasks often. Teaching, podcasting tend to be earthbending tasks. My comics work is almost always airbending task, unless you know, if something's due by a certain date, like if, if, if I'll put like due by Friday next to it, if, if that's something where I have to ship by this date, but usually that doesn't come into play too much. Then personal, this is for, like I said, uh, do I have any doctor's appointments? Do I have any appointments with friends? Am I getting together with anybody? Am I going to, um, go grocery shopping, any kind of thing that happens at a specific, uh, date and time. So like, you know, Tuesdays call with buddy, you know, um, Saturday is Sven Gulli night. Hmm. That's something where I, I make time for that. You know, it's like the one thing I show up for, for on television. And then I'll also put underneath that my self care. If I'm going to, um, exercise any specific days of the week, I try to capture that data too. So Sunday, once again, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and as I run or do any exercise throughout the week, I'll mark it in here to keep track of like, okay, what did I do this week as over overall? How did I, how did I check in on that? And that, is that almost like a, is that a checklist or is it sort of a mini bullet journal kind of thing? It's right? a mini, uh, okay. Yeah. Go ahead. What do you mean by mini bullet journal? Well, mini bullet journal where it's almost like capturing data and a visualization all at once, which is a lot like what you're doing here with the um, tick marks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, so just, is every, yeah. everything becomes tick marks is, is what I would guess. So let's say you did uh -huh. a run on Monday. Then it would go like marks? this and I would put, yep, a oh. circle and an X bullet journal style. 
and then I'll put like how far, you know, two miles, right? Oh, look at that. So I, I did incorporate some bullet journal uh, techniques. Like in the bullet journaling, this is something they do where like if you've begun a task, you'll draw a circle next to it. And if the task got forwarded to tomorrow, like you didn't finish it, you put half of an X in there like that, right? And mm. then when you complete the job, you finish the X. And so now that's a done task. I don't, I don't adhere to that as much. I mostly just do the circle to show that it started, X to show that it's finished. So if, yeah, if I ran Monday and Tuesday, I would put a circle in an X and I would note how many miles or how long, 30 minutes, so on, just to get a sense of how much am I checking in on this thing. Then finally, we get to the last uh, item for me, marketing, and I'll write down, you know, two things I need to do, social posts, three, lean into art, and live streams. And then maybe some other task. I'll just put like another item in here, um, you know, work on um, website, uh, you know, like pitch or service. And this is an area where I'm not going to necessarily, because these tasks don't have um, a clear product to be done. It's more like checking in on an ongoing thing. It's kind of hard to see because I'm using orange ink. But because these are tasks that, that yep. yeah, because these are tasks that don't have a finished product necessarily in terms of I'm making a specific thing to be shipped at this date. This is more like checking in on it. I'll just budget a time. I'll say I'm going to give myself one hour this week to work on that. Right, and I'll put the four little checks next to it. I'm going to give myself one hour this week to think about or to, to make some social posts. But I don't know how many I'm going to make. There's no, I don't have a, um, you know, a quantity that I'm trying to achieve. It's just like get take an hour to do a little bit of work on these two things, these ongoing tasks, okay? Now what I'll do is I'll go around the horn after I've captured everything that I want to have happen, and I'm going to add up how much time I'm looking at. So I'll go one hour, hour and a half, so hour and a half, hour and a half, that's three hours, four, five hours budgeted for teaching. And I write that down underneath. And then I've got six hours budgeted for podcasting. I write that down. And I've got four hours budgeted for money comics. And then two hours budgeted for my personal comics work. I don't put this, my personal uh, hours, into the overall budget. This is my work budget. So now I can add up. Okay. What, I, what am I looking at this week? 20 hours plus four, 24 hours, 30 hours, 35, 37 hours. Oh, wait, I forgot marketing. I didn't add my marketing hours. So I'll go down here, and I've got two hours budgeted for that. So now I've got 39 hours budgeted, and so I'll write that in the bottom corner. Total work budget. 39 hours for that mm. week. Now, if this number, and this number changes week to week, so the, the reason I count this all up is because if I find myself like coming up short, like, like, oh, you only have 33 hours budgeted. You got seven hours left of the work week. Okay, let's allocate. Let's go to some of these other areas and say like, hey, I can give a couple hours here, a couple hours here, so now I can increase my budgets for other areas based on what everything adds up to. So it's like getting a really like broad and exp uh, inclusive sense of what are you committing to in any given week? And how is that going to shake out if you com if you follow through on all these commitments the way you're planning to? Does that make sense? It really does. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 like on that check in where you're, where you're doing yourself meeting, you're getting that uh, that that initial impression of, of the overall plan and the cost for the week and that stuff to accomplish the things you want to accomplish. But then it sounds like you can then revisit it. It's not just a one time use tool. Right. It's, it's to unpack and concretize what, I, what I've committed to do this week. It's get it out of my head, dump it out, and then let's sort it into piles so we can figure out what, these, what I'm really asking of myself. And if I'm, if I'm coming up short, let's adjust. If I'm overdoing it, so I've done weeks where all of a sudden I find out I have 51 hours that I've committed to, okay, let's address that problem. You are working far too much, right? Mm. So now... So now that I know what I've committed to, I'm going to go through and on the items that have earthbending tasks, like so for instance, I have a meeting on Monday 
for CXC, and I've got a webinar class that I'm doing on Monday. I will turn to Monday, and that's the webinar is I'm teaching at Beale City. That's number one. And then I'm going to write down the CXC meeting here. All right. A little off and camera with that I, one. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Slide, slide the book. There you go. There we go. So I write, I write down first my earthbending tasks. And so I'm going to say this one, let's say it was scheduled for 4 p.m. So I'm actually going to block out, and how, how long was the webinar? It was one hour. So 4 to 5 p.m., I'm going to put 0, 1 in this little box in the upper hand corner. I'm just going to outline 4 to 5 p.m. on the timeline. I'm telling myself when I get to Monday, January 2nd, I know not to put any, don't schedule anything in that area, even though it's on my calendar too. It's also to set my expectation for the day. What time's the CXC meeting? I look at my calendar. Okay, it's 6 to 7 p.m. All right. So I'm going to get the wrong pen, my dark blue. And I'm going to write zero 02, indicating this item here, the CXC meeting, is going to take mm. that hour. So now, and I go through, I do that on every page. I go through like every page of the week, that is. I put, I write down all my earth bending tasks. Is there anything else happening on Monday? Nothing in my personal life, okay. Um, well, <laughs> meaning I haven't scheduled anything in my personal life at that time. <laughs> I have things in my personal life. No podcasting. So now I can look for my air bending tasks, right? My either my RoboForce or my Amazon Academy stuff. And I've got all of this time to put it in. So now I'm just going to go ahead and say, okay, well, I know there's two hours in here that I can use for RoboForce pencils. And I'll write that in. So that's my intention of, of capturing the day is I'll, I'll start with that and I'll say, I'm not going to necessarily put the RoboForce pencils in any slot yet because I'm going to see what happens at the start of the day. I like to leave a couple blank. Reason being is that this is what I learned from uh, D3 Say's uh, emergent task planner is stuff happens, stuff carries over. Is there anything from the previous week that I need to attend? Is there any emergency stuff that came in the first thing in the morning where I get an email from somebody saying, can you please take care of this thing? Well, that's going to go into these buckets. It leaves some empty buckets there to these, they will get filled. So I try not to, something I've learned is don't pack the day because you've made a, your schedule way too brittle. And so then... Yeah, go ahead. Oh, that's just, yes, I have that. I very much uh, uh, can agree with that. It's mm -hmm. you're making a brittle schedule and then continuing to do that is, is it's, it's, it's its own, um, yeah, kind of a frustrating pattern that, um, it, you know, trying to, um, yeah, set, set things up reasonably so that, uh, because, um, okay. So how often, uh, how often is it where you have extra things that come in from prior days? or something new that comes up? I would say that that happens fairly regularly. Um, I would say it happens every couple of days, if not every day. So Sure. At least a few times a week, too, like for me as well. It's it's just part of, you know, living and doing business. And uh, That's right. Yeah. So it's great. So is So keeping three open is enough, it sounds like. It tends um, to be. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I'll put a bonus on the bottom, like if I go like six, maybe I'll put seven here and then I'll write, and I do, this one doesn't have a categorical color. This one is just, I put it in red because it's kind of like I want to draw my attention as I put email. Are there any emails that I need to send out today? And I put that all in one bucket. I do not get so granular with this where it's like email Fred, email Lucy, email Charlie. You know, I, I put a sub list here and I would put them, I would put their corresponding color based on where they fall in which bucket. So if I've got to email Dan Mishkin about the Amazon Academy, I'll say, Dan Mishkin 3AA. And if I got to email uh, one of the teachers I work with about a class I'm doing, you know, uh, I'll put her name like Ms. Fuller 3 Thursday. Hmm. And then if it's something, I got to email somebody about, you know, I got to email uh, my, the writer of RoboForce, you know, John Re RoboForce. So I've got some clear color coordination here. The reason I use the colors is because as I fill out the day, I could do a squint test at the timeline to see where my time is going in what buckets very easily. It's a very visual way of seeing how my time is being spent. So... So now let's say the day begins and let's say I check in on my RoboForce pencils, which I estimated would take 
two hours. So I'm going to write two hours, and I'll start by 9 o'clock. I sit down at my desk, and I start with the number three, indicating that I'm working on RoboForce, and I start working. I go off, and I draw. You know, I'll check the clock, and then maybe I finish the pages, and like, oh, it's 10.30 now. Okay, well, now I'm going to draw a box going from starting at 9 to 10.30, and I finished it. And when I complete a block of time, I just mark it I, with, you know, just hashes just to fill it in. Mm. That time has been spent. The time is, I've done something in that time. Well, I budgeted two hours, but I only used an hour and a half. So, I'll, you know, I'll just check those off to say like, okay, that's what you used. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. I was wondering where the, yeah, where does that accounting come in? So it's, you've already set those tick marks down mm -hmm. and you can look back to that one spot to get to their ultimate status, budget versus actual spend. Mm -hmm. huh. And so now I'll say, okay, well, I'm, you know, I'll go throughout the day. I'll add some more tasks in here now. Cause well, cool. I have this extra space. What are some other things I could do? Well, I can switch to doing email now. I'll put which email am I doing first? Well, I'll say like, I'll take on that email to Dan. So I'll put in purple zero seven indicating email and however long it took me to type it. Maybe it took me 15 minutes, took, took me a half hour in this case. And then I'll take care of that email to Ms. Fuller and zero seven in red. And that took 15 minutes to type up. So I'll mark half of a block, right? Uh -huh. Right, because it's a half hour block. Okay, cool. Yep. And then I'll email the John from RoboForce, and that's another 07 marked in green. And that took a little longer. That was a longer, more involved email. So I marked that. As the day goes, the column begins to fill up with these colored boxes. So then now I can very quickly just squint my eyes and see what is taking up the, the, the most of my time that day. And also mm -hmm. I can see how much I budgeted versus how much I spent. And then <clears throat> at the end of the week, when all of these columns are filled out, I can get an estimate of like, what did I expect happen? What did happen? And how can I adjust for the following week? The last thing I do on the day is I take, try to take some time to fill out what good happened. So like, for instance, what good happened today? Um, robo force P three pencils done in 1.5 hours. Ooh. And I'll even put like a little emoji there to say like, okay, that's great. That's how I feel about it. I feel happy right now. I'm not going to write like prose about this. I'm just capturing a thought as, as a reflection of what, what's something good that happened that mm -hmm. I'm, I'm pleased so like with. An, like an inventory, just yep. like making a list that's just enough to, to get the idea. That's, huh. Um, and it's, and it is how you feel. And so the things you, you may feel about, about anything, like that's an interesting reaction there. So it could be just, I'm proud I got that done faster than I budgeted. Right. But it could be, you know, uh, anticipating difficult email from Dan, you know, and I'm using Dan as an example because he's the sweetest person <laughs> in the whole world. He would never send me a really difficult email, but like I also put like, okay, yeah, I sent that email and I'm, I'm bracing myself for what's going to happen next kind of thing. I could put like mm -hmm. whatever emotional content I want to capture about like what occurred over the course of this day. So again, you're getting uh, quantitative data, qualitative data, and then you've got your staging page to get a sense of what was my expectation going into the week. Mm. So that covers a lot. And this, so you combined in your demonstration, both that, that initial meeting, but then you, you explored, well, this is what a day would look like as, as we go along. Um, yeah. and you know, the page would, it starts fresh, like it was set up in the beginning of the week. You don't have to go back and go like, oh no, I started my day and I have a blank page. You're just, you're there. You've, you're, 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 your framing is set up um, mm -hmm. in a lot of ways because even, even the key air bending and um, uh, earth bending tasks are there for you already, right? Right, right. So this, I found this very useful in the sense that I don't show up to many days frazzled because mm -hmm. I have taken the time on Sunday the top of my week to assess what I intend to do. So when I get to Monday and I open up my planner and my time tracker, I know, okay, that's what I have ahead of me. That's what I have to do today. That's what I've committed to doing today. Now let's see how it shakes out in the left column. Oh, 
one more thing. You'll notice I'm not filling up across the entire left column. I'm only filling up about a quarter of the way through. And there's a reason behind this is that, one, I don't want to use up all my ink on these pens. <laughs> I feel like in all those areas. But this is a place where I can grab if something unexpected happens or if I need to capture like some rationale for why this happened, right? So sometimes, like this, let's say I'm, I'm, I'm drawing another RoboForce page. And, and I'll put, you know, Robo Force page two inks, which I, I thought would take me an hour and a half. And let's say I got about, so I put zero four into this box here. And then I start filling out the green and let's say I suddenly stop and because I got a phone call from my agent, got some questions about something that I might want to do. So when I go back and resume a half hour later and put zero four and continue. I can just very quickly, instead of like writing it out as an item, I can put in the corresponding color. This is, it sounds so uptight, but I'll put call from agent. And I'll do this when I take breaks too. Like if I have a pause in the day, like say like, let's say at two o'clock, I decide, oh my gosh, I haven't eaten anything today. Well, then in pink pen comes out and I just put in arrow lunch in this column. This is a place just to write a few ideas uh, to give some, some extra clarity to myself. This is a note to future me that these things happen. And that's why that time was broken up that way. So that's why I leave that space. That's uh, that's, that's neat. So you even know where to look for that stuff too, for like some of those extra annotations, um, space, mm -hmm. space to annotate and having some kind of system to just, you know, to, to, to capture in a way like it, you've made the, this page less brittle by saying, well, all right, there's a place for, for the other stuff. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. And, and the whole idea for me is that I'm preparing myself for success by saying, here's what I've committed to, but leave it flexible enough that I don't, if, if something interrupts, the house of cards doesn't come tumbling down. And so, oh, one last thing, as I finish each task, this is one last little bit of annotation that I do is so page three, RoboForce pencils happened really effortlessly. And I'm happy about that. I do the bullet journal circle with an X to indicate that task has been completed. But let's say I didn't finish page two inks. I'll leave it as an open circle to let me know when I come to look at Tuesday. And if I've got some space for airbending tasks, well, what didn't I get done? And I'll also take care to also do that here too on my staging page. Once, I, once it has absolutely been done, I mark it done. So I have two places I can look for information. Mm. This is the this is the day to day place to look on the actual day, Monday, January two. So when I get to Mon Tuesday, January three, I could look at Monday, January two to see is there anything here that needs to be carried over. But then when I do my self meeting at the end of the month, I can say, okay, here's what I absolutely finished over the course of the week, right? And I mark all those things: the circle and an X. And, and that's the whole, how things can feed forward into, into the next week where now you're standing on the foundation of useful info. You're mm -hmm. helping future you, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And, and it I seems know it's yeah, pretty but, helpful, but, and I'm, I'm sold overall. I'm curious how long your meeting takes on Sunday. Okay. Uh, like I said, I usually spend about 20 minutes to a half hour on it, but I've got, at this wow. point, I've got a rhythm in place because I've been doing this for a long time. I would say if I were doing this fresh, I would probably estimate an hour to get your staging page self-meeting okay. done. But an hour of cost in order to, you know, have like more clarity in the work and the time, knowing where you're going to put your focus time and making a promise to yourself to do it too. There's, there's that aspect as well. And I feel like I'm getting ahead of myself. Maybe we should talk about this in the next part after a break is like mm -hmm. the philosophy behind it, maybe some of the benefits of it, and also some other options to try. Because this is also, there's a lot of drawing and writing going on here that maybe not might be not terribly appealing to some people, right? Because like drawing all these lines over and over again, wouldn't it be better just to work with a template? I personally find this to be very relaxing, doing this part, like drawing the, the different bucket areas. And it's a way for me to like, give myself space to think about, well, what do I want to accomplish this week while I'm drawing this line and this line, you know? So. Yeah, there is something to the, to the ritual of it. 
and how it feels and different. Sure. Um, you, all this stuff is, is very, I don't know, potentially contentious and, and it's, I, um, everyone's got their own mileage and experience about, uh, tracking time, tracking tasks, using apps, using analog tools, uh, what kind of tools, what granularity. Yeah. So th- it'd be great to talk more about like your ideas and, and philosophy behind this and, 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 and see what, see what other, st- are there other thoughts come out? Um, because one of the things too is that, is that you can have friction just by not wanting to commit to a system. <laughs> That's true. That's very true. And, and I should say, this is the system that I sort of cobbled together through interacting with other time tracking tools and in conversations with my wife and having conversations with myself about what works for me and what doesn't. So I would say, start with a commitment to something and with the intention of evolving it and, and, uh, adapting it to your needs. So. That is so re- reasonable. Yeah, it's, uh, that's cool. Let's, um, let's talk more about the adaptation and more ideas about it after, uh, okay. we do another ad. Okay. So we'll take one more break to thank some people who make this project possible. If this is helping you think and do creative work, we hope that you will support the show by buying the products we make. And the product that I make that I hope you will check out is science comics rockets. What is science comics rocket Jersey? Um, it is the, it's a comics documentary about the history and science of rockets as told by the animals who participated in rocket history. So you'll learn how bears and chimps helped us to understand the effects of G-forces, how rats helped advertise fireworks manufacturers, and how one woman saved the American side of the space race with some math and chemistry. You can find an eight-page preview at sciencecomicsrockets.com. It's also available at bookstores everywhere. Well, another way to support the show is I have a new workshop called Listening Like a Coach that you can buy. It's a very, um, it's it's a, well, listening is, a, well, a pretty powerful skill in general. And there's different kinds of listening, which we talk about in the workshop, listening like a leader or like a consultant or even like just a caring human being. But then coaching is a different kind of mechanism. And well, I mean, do you ha- are you someone that, that people come to ask for advice or do people like to bounce their ideas off you and get your thoughts and reactions? And well, if you're listening like a coach, you can help them navigate their own thinking on a matter and you don't have to inject your own agenda unless someone really specifically asks you for, for what you would recommend or t- tell me about a time you did this thing. That's, that's useful too. Coaching is different though, because you're not adding your own agenda for helping someone navigate like where they are, what has them stuck? What are they thinking? What are their words? And you hear them and go through a particular flow that I teach you in this course, listening like a coach. And by the way, I have a couple of really, um, well, another, uh, another way to you, you can engage with this material. Well, you can get the, um, the video workshop for 19 bucks, but then you can do a couple of different upgrades for you individually or a whole team up to 30 people where we can set up a 30 minute Q and a that you can, you can dig further into your questions and ideas that you got from the worksheets, worksheets and the projects and the stuff, the video of listening like a coach. And you can get all that by going to gum road, right? Go gum.co slash L L A C W S that is put the, in your web browser, gum.co slash L L A C W S. And you'll get this page and be able to get your own copy that works for you of listening like a coach. Super. So let's get back to talking the two of us. Um, or I could, I could just talk with just me. Okay. There we go. There's both of us. So yeah. Any other thoughts, questions, wonderings about th- this whole business of setting up uh, a time tracker like the, the like mine, uh, Rob? Any any reactions to it? Um, well, let's see. Thinking about um, you know jumping in and uh, like if I'm getting convinced, what could I do to try? Because it's always something to see someone else is finished, right? And mm-hmm. and you haven't started, or yeah. it's really different. If you're already doing this and you see Jersey system, you probably have a lot of, um, you know, specific things that you could do to, um, augment, modify your system. Um, but if you're starting fresh and, uh, and even fresh to the idea of time tracking and even maybe with, um, I'll say it feelings and frustrations about time tracking because 
um, that is a mechanism that gets used toward optimizing labor and often limiting your choice and agency in different workplaces that choose to uh, aggressively track time, which may be based on their business model or oh, maybe yeah. just based on their culture or both. Yep. Yep. And not all those mechanisms and systems feel so great to participate in. That's, that is a very fair point. And I don't want anybody to misunderstand me as to saying that my time tracker is all about squeezing every last drop of creativity out of the day or, or productivity out of the day. Um, I don't, I, I try to be very careful about not getting too married to the idea that I'm only worth what I made. Um, this is more about me just looking at and, and having a clear sense of how much time it takes me personally to do certain things so that when I'm engaged in trade with somebody, I can give them a very accurate estimate of what that is because we all work at different speeds. We create at different speeds and that's the way it ought to be because we're different people. That's what makes the world interesting. So this self-knowledge has less to do with punishing myself towards making more widgets as it has to do with me learning about how I work and what is, what, how do I optimize it so that I can find time to do more things that are meaningful to me. Now, I do think like one of the things I think was probably like a big, um, would be really challenging to do for the first time is my staging page where I have the buckets of, of tasks that I do. I didn't walk into time tracking with that. As a matter of fact, I had to learn what my buckets were. And I would say, if you want to get started doing this and not go through the whole rigmarole of building your own time tracker, I would download um, Dave Strisay's excellent, excellent emergent task planner, which is trademarked. So I got to be careful about calling my thing an ETP. It's not. Mine is a time tracker. He has the trademark to the emergent task planner and well-deserved because it is a powerful tool, which is all set up for you. It's templatized for you. And he doesn't ask you to define what categories of work. He's just saying, what are the things that you want to do? And I think that's a great place to start is to say, write out what are the tasks I hope to accomplish today? What jobs have I committed to and what things do I want to do? And then track the time so that you can begin to learn. The, the first two years of my time tracking were done on this tool. And then that's when I started to learn, okay, wait a minute, these, some of these things fall into like areas or buckets that I can start to color code. And you can see in some of my early ETPs, uh, me color coding the things uh, and anticipating that this was eventually going to emerge, this idea of like, doing a weekly staging page. Mm. That's, uh, I mean, it, it is, uh, that's interesting. It is trademark. That's cool. Uh, it's a fantastic system and, um, and D3 say it deserves all the credit and is, um, has, I mean, design is a hard thing to do well when it's like there, you, someone takes on a, like a, like a hard puzzle and then makes it approachable. And that's what, that's what the emergent task planner does. And so you don't have to start out from scratch. Um, or, uh, you know, Jersey's task planning system is, um, is definitely its own thing. I mean, it really has become, you know, I, I get that it's, it's sort of, a um, in its heart, it's like, you know, there, there's a, there's a glowing picture of, of D3 say, right? right? <laughs> but like, that's right. Like in the, it has a locket, I mean, right? I mean, I mean, it's like, oh, uh, <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think kind thoughts about that person every day because of this. Right. I, I took that initial idea and then added a lot of my own flavors to it to make it work for me. And that's I, I want to also bring that distinction up to demonstrate for you, if you're planning on trying this, walk in with the expectation that it's going to change. This isn't a system. My system is constantly changing. Like th three years ago, I didn't have the what good happened bucket. You know, that was a mm. recent a recent addition to the system. I'm constantly evaluating it. Do you have anything that you would uh, throw out as other things to try, Rob? Uh, let's see. I mean, I don't know. Digitally, it's um, honestly. You, you can't you can't pick up a a digital device without running into a task planner. So it's like everyone has their, in their ecosystem task planning. Um, and they're all, you know, they're fine. Basically it's, um, I have a, a article in progress that I need to finish. I'm kind of stuck on it, right. For my, for my blog, which I've been blogging daily on interactive dash storyteller.com. Um, it's, uh, about lists. Lists are so powerful and I love lists, but for individually and collective endeavors and stuff. And in a way, all this stuff is, it's like saying your intentionality 
note to future self, how'd it go? And, and then keeping that dialogue going and that there's more things to manage in that dialogue. Like, yeah, time matters. Sure. Estimation matters. Turning this into a habit skill. So I don't have like, I used to be a user of all kinds of different platforms. Um, like, uh, OmniFocus. Um, I've used Trello for personal things. I've used, um, like different, different formats lately. I've been, I've been less hourly and time focused other than like I did my own, like a few episodes back, I did my own analysis for where does all my time go during the day? Because, um, I've, I've had a, um, in, in recent months, I've been doing a lot more family caretaking due to all kinds of stuff. Right. right. So, uh, my working hours, like Jersey's list, whatever, and it ends at midnight. I'm like, that wouldn't work for me because <laughs> I'm uh, like midnight is the heart of one of the chunks of the day that I yeah. am producing. So, so I've done things like, um, like making my own, uh, uh, like templates of that. Well, like what are, what are the, the things I'm doing during the day? Um, like doing a bit of an inventory of blocks of time and, and then what kind of things happen. And then I did actually turn this into a whole, um, like self interview where I, I, I went through and I, I made a markdown table. And, and, and so part of this is like discovering what you have available, being kind and reasonable to yourself about intentions to, you know, set forth. And then how do you follow through on it? And it doesn't matter what system you use if you're doing something that addresses those basic, um, areas of concern. And, um, in, right. So if, if you can take those areas of concern and say, oh, that's enough, I'll craft my own system. Fantastic. Um, for me, I've been using mostly uh, like I, I'm trying to find one of my templates. We'll, we'll probably do an episode on that down the road. But like I really like to pay attention to the um, like what went well, what didn't go well. Um, what do I feel a, a especially appreciative of a gratitude list? Um, remind myself of where I want to go as far as big, big goals what's the next thing I can focus on to act on those goals, um, break that down into more steps if I need. Also think about like, what in the world am I connected to that supports me? And what can I give support to? So totally not as time focused as what Jersey's doing um, of late, but that's because of life circumstance. And, and, um, and I still need to check in with time enough to make sure I'm getting those things I want to get done accomplished. So, yeah, but it's, that is, uh, I would say my system is biased toward, um, a, a general idea of capacity to ha to be kind and reasonable to myself about how I can tackle goals. And then it's this more of an ongoing dialogue about actions and goals. Mm -hmm. And then I fit in what I can fit in as often as I can do, right. um, I, I, that's, I, I'm, I'm glad that you expressed that, that, that situation, um, as if somebody's feeling resistance to the idea of time tracking, that's worth a gut check to look at like what's happening in your life. Is your life incompatible with doing that kind of granular tracking right now? Um, mm -hmm. some, some people, when they, when they see me doing this, they think like, that seems like an awful lot of work to add to your day. Um, I personally don't find it to be that big of an intrusion on my day. It's just something that I'm just constantly looking over and checking on. Um, it, it, it's outsourcing my brain, right? It's like saying like, I don't have to keep track and remember of everything because I wrote it down as it happened. Um, and there's another aspect to this that I think like is worth thinking about. My perspective is, is that this has given me sort of an objective point of view on what my habits are without without any judgment. I mean, yes, there's the what good happened section, but that's usually not me like saying like, <laughs> like Chris Farley going stupid, 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 you know, because <laughs> I didn't, I didn't finish something I wanted to finish. <laughs> I just like try to capture like what happened. Did I come in uh, over or under budget on these things so I can make uh, assessments and adjustments? It, 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 it feels very dispassionate to me when I'm doing it. Um, and it also reveals it, like what your actual resources are with regard to time. You know, like I, I that's again why I highlighted like the, 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 the people, the artists who are looking for uh, finding the time to get the creative, uh, the, that, that, that flow state time that they need to get into their work. Um, if they're, if they checking in 20 minutes here, 20 minutes there isn't working for you and you want to find like bigger blocks of time, 
finding out where your capacities are, looking for those spots is where how you can discover it. And tracking when you're doing it reveals to you how much time you actually need, right? So I and I have to say that is a very important skill. So I will also use like um, I'll, I'll, I'll have goals and, and tasks that I want to get done in a given day or two days loop. Right. So mm-hmm. I can, you know, it's, it's a, I, the idea of sort of tiling where not every one of my things has to get done in a day. But caring about time is all it is certainly in my vocabulary and, and comfort and is very important that it, it that doesn't necessarily seem appealing um, initially. But mm-hmm. if you find a way to find your way into caring about time and managing it and skilling up, you will find new capabilities as a creative business person and, um, not to prescribe exactly the path to do that for everyone individually, but caring about it in some way, it's, it, it does, it opens up new possibilities. You can, you, you can accomplish, um, the things you, you, you've set out to do if, if yeah, you give yourself that. I, I'm going to start advocating for, I, I had this conversation recently with some other creative people about like the way I've hacked uh, Inktober and other creative challenge seasons in the past is I really want to like start advocating for this idea of like show up to these mini workshops with a real um, aggressively selfish eye. Like what's in it for me? How can I take this and run with it and make it mine? I think that's mm. the spirit that we would hope people would engage with this in. Like I gave you a case in point, an example to try, but that that should not be the end of it. The 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 rest of it is up to you to take it and really ask yourself what you want from it and how can you hack it to make your own. I think few things make us as happy as when we see people take what we've got and hack it and 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 show it back to us because that also teaches us. And remember that music I played earlier, you teach me, I teach you. So that's 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 the deal. That's the contract here, everybody who's watching this right now. Uh, uh, yeah, that's that is cool. And and at the same time, like yes, and the uh, <laughs> like Jersey sh- demoed a pretty darn powerful system. I like not to discount that. I I think I know. Is it time to celebrate what you? It, it's I really appreciate. This is almost as um. This isn't as. This is bigger than learning what floral dairy is for me. Um, <laughs> but there's, there's, certain, there's certain things that like I'll be adjacent to that Jersey will share and I'll be like, gosh, what, I know there's more to it than that, but we got other things to worry about right now or what have you. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, yeah, seeing you step through that, that whole process is immensely practical and useful. And I do think it's repeatable. Like anyone who, who has gone through that section of this, of today's show will be able to do their own meeting and check in and plan out, plan out their week and do that sort of measuring, uh, how it went after they did that estimation and stuff. That is pretty darn useful and powerful. Yeah. I, I, I really depend on it. I mean, I, I absolutely need it to know what's happening in, in any given week because especially these days I'm scheduling stuff out a year in advance now. So like I won't remember it unless I can do that check-in on a regular basis. So mm. if anybody wants to try it, here is the checklist uh, or a, a summary of the procedure. Let me make it bigger on the screen. Oh, wrong one. I want to go to this one. So assemble your tools. You're going to get a graph composition notebook, some colored pens, a ruler or some kind of straight edge, and you're going to need your calendar or schedule. Some Wherever you've been keeping your appointments, uh, you're going to need that. So you're going to create a staging page with task categories if you want to give that a whack, or you could just like have a staging page of what all the tasks are. And then on the next seven pages, you add the day and date. Define the blocks. You know the, the bottom block is for your qualitative data, like how do you feel about what happened. Left column is for the time spent. You're putting the hours on the grid line. And then on the right, you're going to have your you know, number of tasks that you put. And you have a self-meeting where you assign the earthbending and airbending tasks and place earthbending tasks on the corresponding day pages. Finally, you track the tasks as you attend to them. And then you review at the top of next week's self-meeting. Um, like I said, I've been doing this for going on nine years now. And um, yeah, I, I find it to be fairly fairly reliable and useful. Um, so is there anything else that we should say before we wrap it up? I think we did a lot of wondering along the way and, um, shared some different avenues into this. So, um, I just want to say this, this was really cool to have a chance to get that full walkthrough 
of your process. Cool. Thanks. I hope, I hope everybody else liked it too. So, uh, you know, please consider liking and subscribing to this video and the audio podcast is at leanintoart.com. Thanks for watching until next time. I've been Jersey Drozd of leanintoart.com and Jersey Drozd on Instagram. And I've been Rob Stenzinger of leanintoart.com and Rob Stenzinger places like Instagram. Okay. Bye. Show notes for this episode can be found at leanintoart.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at the user leanintoart, and you can reach us via email at leanintoart at gmail.com. And remember, leaners aren't wieners. Thanks for listening.